Hello world, this is Edward Bevilacqua, the publisher of Ciao Tutti, member of the Italian American Club here in Las Vegas. And we have the uh, great privilege to be here with Phil LaGreco uh, just after he finished a workout today. Phil, thank you for joining us. Pleasure's all mine. Pleasure's all mine to be in front of you guys and uh, good. having a good chat. Okay, now um, uh, we usually start with what are your Italian roots? Well, my Italian roots uh, come from Sicily. Okay, um, Sicily. Uh -huh. I was born in Toronto, but grew okay. up in Sicily, and um, I was there from the ages of two to nine. Then two to nine. Now, uh, okay, then you went back to Sicily. I heard you say earlier. Yeah. So what happened was after, from the ages of nine to eighteen, I grew up in Toronto. In Toronto, Canada. Okay. Now wait. So let's go back. Uh, <laughs> it's a little you know, bit we're Italian. Yeah. <laughs> so you're born in Toronto. Born in Toronto. Okay. I have some relatives that were from uh, what's Niagara Falls, Canada. Also. Niagara Falls, Canada. Yeah, my dad was born in Niagara Falls, New York. Right on. Yeah. Nice. And um, so you were born there. What did your dad do? My dad was a bricklayer. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. Good. All right. And then he decided to go back to Italy because of what? Just you know, I think you know a lot of the, the the dream is that thinking you go to come to America, North America, you yeah. make earnings and then you want to go back oh, okay. and enjoy it. But when I was nine years old, the economy in Italy wasn't so great, so my parents thought about my future. Okay. So we came back to Toronto, 93, okay. I was nine years old, Okay. didn't speak a word of English. Uh -huh. <laughs> and uh, then, What did your dad do? Was he back to Berkeley? Yes, back okay. to Berkeley. And, uh, so did you ever do that? No. Okay, but let me see the magazine now. One of our sponsors, um, Frank Bonanno, his dad was a mason. Right on. And he used to build homes out of brick. When yeah. Frank was a kid, he had to chip the stuff off the old bricks right. that his dad would buy. Well, my dad did many things. You know, he uh, used to do back to things. He used to get okay. tiles. So so basically, construction. Got it. Like most like of the tiles. Exactly. There right. So. All right. So, uh, so he came back to, to Toronto and did the same thing. Then you got over to, to the U.S. So. No. After I finished high school. I went by myself back to Italy. Oh, your the family army. stayed. My family stayed. Okay. I was 18 years old. My family stayed. I went back to Italy. And uh, was, yeah. what's the Italian army? For me, it was great because I didn't do anything. <laughs> I was on the national team for boxing, so okay. It was as if I represented the Italian army as a club. Got it. And where and did you fight against? Every anybody in the world. But I mean, it's like the Italian team fights against the Czech team, or the Czech team, Polish team, or there's tournaments. What about the Israeli team? Also. How are they? They're okay. How about the Germans? <laughs> Germans are not. They're all right. Okay. So the best ones are in the amateur boxing. Russians, Cubans, oh. Ukrainians. What about the American team? The Ameri the amateur team, no. Okay. What no. about Australia? Really? Oh. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. And how's the Italian team? Very. They're one of the best in the world. Are they? Yeah. Huh. I'm an amateur boxer. Amateur. Yeah. And then what happened? Then what happened was in 2004, I was getting ready to go to the Olympics for Athens, and I hurt my back during the Olympic qualifiers. So that was a setback for me. Sure. And then in 2006, I moved back to Canada, I turned professional in Montreal. Okay. And I didn't get over to the United States until 2009. 2009. Okay, six my, years ago. Right. And then my Did first. You speak Canadian? Oh, English. Oh, okay. Yeah. My first fight was in uh, 2012 at Mandalay Bay in the States. Okay. That was great. Your first fight here. 2012. What fight number was that for you? Then? 23. 22. Fight number 23. So you're 22 and 0. I think so. Yeah. I was 22 and 0, 21 and 0. Okay. And then my last five, six fights have been here in the United States, Atlantic City and Vegas. Okay. Well, that's skipping ahead a little bit. Yeah. We're going to get to that because that's the important stuff. But uh, tell me, um, when did you want to be a boxer? Since 1984. Okay. So you know exactly <laughs> so what happened. I was a very energetic kid. And, you know, it was either it's, he played soccer, but I sure. wasn't that great. So this is in Italy. This is in Italy, and I like to fight. Okay. Not because I just was watching Rocky movies, okay. and my father always liked boxing. So. So did I he teach you how to box? A little bit. Okay. And then I took up boxing at the age of ten years old in Toronto. In Toronto. Right. Okay. Yeah. 
And, uh, How was that? Good program, good coach? Yeah, I had a good coach. Taught me a lot. Uh, some of the things that he taught me I still carry to this day. Oh, wow. So, and uh, from then on, you know, a lot of kids have visions when they're born. Sure. This is for anybody, if you're watching. They are watching. And when you have a vision, as a kid, you believe you can do anything in the world. Then, once you grow up, something happens. You hang out with the wrong people. They discourage you instead of encouraging you. So as a kid, I always had a vision, and no matter what, I kept that vision always alive. Because okay. when we're all kids, we can think of whoever we sure. want. Right. I'm sure when you were young, astronaut, right. you, you thought you could be an astronaut, exactly. but something happened. Yeah. Why didn't you become an astronaut? Because uh, we went to law school. <laughs> Changed up. <laughs> yeah, whatever it was, you're right. The, the, okay. the moral of this is the energy. As kids, we can feel like we anything. That's one thing we should always have as adults is the energy of a youngster. And your parents encouraged you. Yes. They didn't crush your dream. No, not So at all. was your dream to be like Rocky or what? My dream was just to be a good looking boxer. Okay. <laughs> and and just, smart. Right? And, and try to be smart, of course, and uh, to represent I think, you know, I'm very one of the very few fighters that represent the two countries as an amateur, I represent the Canada yeah. and I represent the Italy. Mm -hmm. And now my dream is a professional is to chase that world title okay. and have a chance to fight the best fighters in the world. And uh, so, and Las Vegas helps you do that. You know what, Las Vegas, the city, is probably designed for me, for the type of person that I am, for what I want to do. Not just in boxing, but in life in general. This city is just unbelievable. And if you haven't got, been here, my advice is book your flight ASAP. <laughs> okay. Now, speaking of Las Vegas. How old were you the first time you came? I was 27. Okay. No, I'm sorry. My mistake. I was 22 years old. Okay. Do you remember that? Absolutely. Okay. You flew in or drove? I flew in. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember when you first saw the city, how you yeah, felt? Yeah. It was just like the, the, the energy that, you know, that those butterflies get in your stomach. So were you like trying to look out the window? Yeah, of course. Okay. And what did you think when you saw the city in the <laughs> middle of the desert? Exactly what you see on TV, but actually better once you land. And so what did you think? When you, what, what time of year was this? It was in January. January. So it was not really cold, but cold compared. Well, compared to Montreal, was it oh, Montreal back like then? It was, so you're like, it was like summertime, and of course. Okay. And uh, I got here. I was obviously for boxing. I supported a friend back then who fought uh, uh, in a boxing car. It was great. But I said to myself, the next time I'm going to land here, is going to be for business and okay. I'm going to fight and I'm going to box. And that happens to be true. That happened to be the case because the next time I came to Vegas, I fought. Okay. And how long were you here the first trip? Just a weekend or something? A couple weeks. A couple weeks. Yeah. And you liked it immediately? I loved it, yeah. I didn't get, I didn't know anybody yet, mm -hmm. but I could see myself me being part of the city. Uh -huh. I mean, this city is just great. I could call this my second home already. I have many places that I call my second home, but this is probably my home away from home right now. Okay. And is Sicily your home? I will say Toronto. Toronto, okay. Yeah. So yeah. when you think of where you, where would you want to retire to live like when you're 80 on? Probably Sicily. Okay. Maybe Las Vegas because the weather's great. Okay. Well, what's the weather like in Sicily? It's like Las Vegas. Okay. This is, but not that hot, right? No, it gets hot. It does it? It gets hot. But so is your family is, from the mountains or down at the, the mountains? Okay. But the difference is we have the beaches. So the hot, now a hot summer day like today, I will go take a dive at the beach. But I could just go to the resorts here at the yeah, the true. same. Yeah. Now, um, you know, you had dinner at the club last night. Great dinner. Okay. And a lot of the members from the club about you know we have almost. We have almost uh, 700 members. Wow. Mostly professionals and business owners. And I think about 60% of them are Sicilian. What wow. do you think of that? I think it's great. I mean, it goes to show that back in the day, Sicilians, you know, they did not have the best uh, way possible to make an earnings. In Italy. And we had to, you know, definitely uh, travel across the world to make ends meet. But, you know, the Tans, the Sicilians, the Tans in general are very successful people yeah. everywhere we go. Right. We know that, that? Because we know to adjust to people, we know to adjust to environment. And okay. The Italians, not because uh, I'm Italian and we're Italians, but we actually contribute a lot to the world. You think about Italy, 
France, Germany, China, Japan. Yeah. These are, I can't think of any other countries that contribute a lot to the world. Yeah. So, and Italy, the way it's shaped, is the best look country <laughs> in the world. That's why a lot of Italians are good looking, okay. <laughs> like ourselves. Right. Okay. And uh, so, what about uh, what do you think about Italian fashion? Top, right? Italian fashion is probably the best. Yeah, I'm not wearing any clothes, not because I want to show off. I just finished my training and I'm all sweated. They don't have any clothes to wear, but next interview, yeah, I'll cover up for sure. <laughs> <laughs> no, so and Italian food. Italian food. You know what? I'm very impressed about is that how the Italian Americans they don't speak a word of Italian. That's True. fine. Yeah, that's okay. I can yeah. deal with that. Okay, but they kept their cuisine very authentic. Uh -huh. Very authentic. I could walk into any Italian restaurant uh -huh. that's originally sure, and honestly have a taste for home. How was the dinner last night? Great. Good. Whoever did it was good. Okay. Good. Very great. So yeah. That was at the club. What other places do you like here? Well, obviously I like the Italian club. Okay. Um, I like to hang out at uh, the casinos. You know what I've okay. noticed? What, what is this on your hand? This is my uh, one of my sponsors is a restaurant. It's is a five-star restaurant. No, it's in uh, Niagara Falls. Okay. This is probably one of the best restaurants that I've ever been in my life. Okay. And good people, good friends of mine, we like family. Shout out to Casami Ristorante. What's up, guys? Shout out to all my sponsors that uh, support me: Pilotary Winery, ACG, Physiomed, um, and so on. There's so many of them that sure. support me. So really uh, appreciate it. Okay. So where else do you like to eat here? Well, Caesars is good. Okay. STK at uh, it's at uh, Cosmopolitan. Okay, haven't been there. You go to, so at Caesars, you go to Rails? Yes, I have. Actually, I went to Rails. It's funny you say that because I went to Rails in 2012 after the weigh-in. A lot of fighters we starved to make the oh. weigh-in, and a good friend of mine from New Jersey he always takes me to the best restaurants to go eat and carve up before I get ready for battle the next day. So we went to Rails. Great dinner. It's a great dinner. What did you have? Pasta. Okay. Pasta. No, you don't have any, any meat. A little bit of meat, little, of course. Just a little. You want to carb up, you need the energy, you need okay. the fuel. So like double helpings? Everything, triple? Everything. Everything. Okay. Everything. Plus more. Okay. Yeah, good salads. Uh, so but the night before a fighter fights, the restaurants love it. The restaurants... Ah, man. <laughs> the restaurant, I love the restaurant life. It's great. You get to meet, first of all, a lot of great people. Mm -hmm. Like, go up meet people met at uh, the Italian what? club. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yourself, yeah. At Angelo. Yeah. So, uh, Rayo. So, how was that? Game? So you said it was, it was very good. good. Out of ten, I would rate it ten. Okay. How about uh, Ferraro's? Never been. Any of these other ones? Bartolotta? Scarpetta? Yes. Uh, maybe I've been to Scarpetta. Okay, how about Trattoria Reggiano? This is at the Venetian. And they have one in summer. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Okay. Very good. So you like that. You smile when you say it. Very that. good, yeah. So I actually had, it's on YouTube. I had dinner there. I put it with my good friend Polly. Oh, really? Yeah, it's okay. on YouTube our dinner. Well, maybe we can go have lunch sometime if they're one up at, uh, in um, Summerlin. They just opened one. This is the Bonanno family. They have 50 restaurants. In oh, wow. In the... Uh, in the food courts from New Jersey, really good people, good family. And Rob's son is was a race car driver. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. So they know the restaurant business pretty well. Really. So food is important to us Italians. Food is very important. You know, the one, the boxes. first thing, mm -hmm. the first thing that an Italian person yeah. does as soon as he goes away away from home, he looks for a fine restaurant. True or true? True. Yes, yes. A Angelo told me when he goes at a hotel, whenever he travels, he goes to the hotel. The first thing he asks him is, where is the best Italian restaurant in town? You know, if it, an Italian goes away mm -hmm. and does not find good food, he misperforms this whole, this whole trip. <laughs> okay, I never thought about that. It's but true. think about it. Yeah. Whether it's for You're business, right, because it pleasure, still bothers you. Business, pleasure. Um, activities and you go to a place, let's say you're about to yeah. go to Timbuktu yeah. and you're not, not eating right. great and you're Italian yourself, yeah. well, I'm you're disappointed gonna, because you're going to misperform your whole yeah. trip. Well, that's a good point because it's not just the actual eating, it's everything that goes around it. Exactly. Okay, now let me ask you this question.
when you were growing up, did your parents drink, give you any wine? Absolutely. Okay, how did that work? Great. Beer, wine, I still drink beer to this day. Okay. Um, actually, it's good for you. You know, I think the Mediterranean diet is the best diet in the world because you're not overeating, yeah. you're having a little bit of everything, and mo moderate. Right. So. Okay, now, so when you were just a little kid, did your parents give you water with wine in it? Did they start it no. out that way? Just pure wine? We went all the way. <laughs> Champagne, everything, all the way. Weddings, <laughs> Christmas holidays, all the way. <laughs> so you're two, you're drinking a glass of wine. Yeah, okay. we went all cool. the way. Okay. Yeah. So uh, what uh, other lessons did you learn? Your dad was had to be a hard worker. He's doing uh, hard work. My dad's a typical entrepreneur and go-getter. Okay. You know, he'd always, whatever there's ways he can get his hands on to make a buck or two, legally, of yeah. course. And, and he did. And doing tile, that's that's also an art. It is an art. If you really think about it, why is Las Vegas so beautiful? Because the people built it. Exactly. And Italians. have you noticed, I don't know if it's me, but I've noticed that Las Vegas has, has a lot of Italian themes. Yes. The Venetian, Venetian the Lazio, the Caesars, yeah. and so on and yeah. so on. Um, like I said, we contributed to the world, yeah. and I'm proud of it. And, you know, all the countries, you know, I love every part of the world. You know, I just love people in general. You know, I well, like to learn about, about people. You, you don't got to be Italian for me to say hello. Yeah. No. Well, it's you know, I it's obvious to everybody that you are very easy to get to talk to, Thank friendly. You. When you go into a fight, now Sterling McPherson, who you talked to before this evening, he told me when he would go into a fight, it was war. I have are you pal mood swings? Before, right before the fight starts, or when you're in the fight? No, no. When I'm in the fight, I'm focused. But leading up to the fight, a killer one day kill. I might be smiling. The day, the next day, or the next fight, I might be serious. Like it all depends how I feel. But when that bell rings, focus. Focus. Okay. Are you like Rocky? Am I, I don't like to get hit. Rocky okay. got hit many times. <laughs> okay. So, uh, but when you're in the ring, how do you think of the other guy? I just think about it as a business deal. Okay. A transaction that needs to be done. Okay. And He's that, there for business and this is that's it. And I understand breathing is very important for boxing. Breathing is super important. As you know, my nose is congested right now, but I think the I'm, I'm allergic to pollen. Oh. So. Okay. So isn't that the problem? Most people that get in street fights, brawls, do they stop breathing? They, no, they're, they're out just, of shape. Oh, it's not it's not breathing, it's just they're no, not in they're shape. Not in shape. I want to see a lot of these bar fights. That's why I always stay away from bar fights, folks. Never get into any bar fights. Take, you know, do the right thing. Call the cops. You know, call security. Don't get into any fights. Is uh, we're leading. Leave it to the professional. We don't fight. That's number one. That's a profession. But number two, you know, we want to lead by example for our next generation. You know, so. But going back to your story. Yeah. A lot of people are not in shape. Most people are not in shape, especially yeah, right. the bar yeah. fights, the beer drinkers. Yeah. So what happens is, you know, they get excited. They Within 15 seconds, they're flow. gone. If right. you're smart, if <laughs> yeah. you let them wear themselves out. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. And uh, now, did you ever do any MMA? Yes. Okay. You say that like no. <laughs> <laughs> I did judo. Oh, judo. Before I started boxing. Okay. Did that help you in your boxing? No. No, not at all. No. Okay, totally different. I was nine years old. Oh. I was young. Okay. Um, I like MMA. A lot of the friends, a lot of the fighters that are in the UFC, some of them are friends of mine. And uh, I respect all sports. I respect all individual sports cycling, tennis, boxing, MMA, anything that has to do with golf. sprinting, golf. Bad because man. if you win, you win because of you. Yeah. Okay. And if you lose, you lose because of you. Right. Yes, you have your team. Formula yeah. One, this is the best way I could explain how a fighter works. It's like the Formula One. You have the lab. This is my lab, the boxing okay. gym. Uh -huh. So I have the team that's controlling me and telling me the shots that I got to do. And uh, make a pit stop every round. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. So, no. You can't, you know, if you run out of gas, you can't call timeout. Yeah. If you get injured, you can't call timeout. If you're tired, you can't call timeout. You just gotta, you gotta just not get knocked grind out. your teeth, you know, 
try your best. And, uh, now, when you're in the corner between rounds, if you're doing well, what typically do you want your, your corner people to say to you? You're doing well, kid. Okay. <laughs> just no. keep doing it. Keep, no, but I can just to see what, exactly what he sees from the outside, what I should be doing, what I could be doing, what I need to avoid in order for me not to get hit, uh -huh. right? So if you're ahead, the last thing you want to do is put down your guard and get knocked down. That's the last thing. That, that is That's the embarrassing a boxer's thing. nightmare. A nightmare. Okay. So yeah. that keeps you going all the way through. Is this, I'm not ahead by points. It's I gotta, I can get knocked out any time. Absolutely. And Absolutely. you're at the weight group where you can get knocked out one punch, right? Well, in boxing, one punch can change everything. Yeah. And But and, on the really light guys, isn't it hard to knock somebody out, these really small guys? You know what it is? is the higher the level, the harder it is to get an echo because everyone's uh, so good. I see. Okay. You know, once you're starting up a boxing and you, you know you have your first few fights, you're knocking right. everybody up because you're fighting guys that maybe a little bit less experienced sure. or you know they're not as right. good as you. But as you get to the top, you climb the ladder. Everybody, it's, it becomes a chess match Got more, you know, more likely. You know, you still get knocked out, but not as much. You get knocked out of something bad. Absolutely. You made a mistake. Or we they got lucky or whatever. The punches that you don't see are the ones that hurt. Uh, now, people in Las Vegas like Tyson. What do you say about Mike Tyson? Love Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson, I think, was one of the great Now, if fighters. you were his weight, what would you do if you had to fight him? Run. <laughs> <laughs> Run. I don't know. Tyson was great. Because he's he like a killer in the ring, right? He had speed, power, good head movement. Total focus. He was focused when he wanted it to be. Oh, I see. He had a lot of distractions, but I think in the late 80s, Tyson won his at his When best. he did his time, yeah. And I think he would destroy most heavyweights. Okay. Today. Today, if he yesterday. Was in shape today you know. Yeah. Well, what about him against Rocky Marciano? Tyson wins. Really? Tyson wins. Okay. Tyson could take a shot, he had more speed, and maybe the power. The same, or maybe he had greater power. Tyson, like I said, Tyson was Tyson. Okay. Now what about Tyson. Tyson versus Ali? Cassius Clay beats him. Okay. Not, Not Ali. Ali. Okay. No. No way. Cassius Clay from 1965. So before he went to prison? Yeah. Okay. Cassius Clay beats him. Okay. It's too fast or what? Too fast, could move, could see the angle, could see him coming. Uh, right. But Tyson was just a split. could not get him. Exactly. Okay. And Tyson yeah. wasn't really afraid of getting him, right? Oh, he used to never get hit, really, because he, had, he was oh. so good at slipping his punches and moving. But he, whenever he got hit, he actually had a good chin. Okay. He had a good beard, Yeah, you call okay. it. Good beard. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, your mother, good cook? Great cook. My father, even better. Okay. What did they What did they make that you like? What don't they make? Okay. That's Do the question. they make gnocchi? Gnocchi, pasta. Not so much. We're so solid. Yeah. We're so silly, right? Yeah. So, so my family's from Abruzzo. Okay. So polenta was big. Italian sausage, the famous oh. Italian sausage, sausage, um, veal cutlets, okay. veal chops, um, spaghetti, oh, shrimps, calamari. Okay. So what part of Sicily is your family from? Palermo. Palermo. Oh, okay. Not right. far from Corleone. Okay. I stayed in Palermo. And? I love it. I stayed at... Uh, Hotel called the uh, Villa J or something like that. At Roman ruins, really nice old right. hotel right on the right on the water. Right. And uh, you know, really. How was it? Beautiful. Yeah. Everything's beautiful. Yeah. You know, as you were saying earlier, it's really beautiful. You know, the thing is that if you have a decent job in Italy, it's the best place to live in the world. Never leave. No. Why? But because of me, I always been used to traveling all over. Right. I don't think I could ever stay one place for like a long time. I have to Other get out. Other than here. Other than Las go, Vegas. You come and go. Let me tell you something. Las Vegas is like a good Saturday night, 365, 24-7. And you <laughs> might, so let's say you go to La, you go out, wherever you're from in this world, and you have to wait till Saturday in order to have a great time. Guess what? Las Vegas is like Saturday, 365, 24-7. Wow. Okay, I have one last question. What's your question? And, and I have, have an answer something. for you. Okay, good. Because with me, I usually, it's either between my brother and I, we know everything, 
So if I don't know, that's a question. My Ask me a, a real question, a silly question, but a real question. Okay, this is a real question. I don't know if it's silly. <laughs> Sauce or gravy? Oh, sugo. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sicilian. Okay, good. All right, excellent answer. Okay, Phil. Well, thank you very much. My pleasure for taking the time. My pleasure. You guys can follow me on Instagram at Phil Greco, at Twitter and Facebook. How about saying something to our Italian brothers? Amici italiani che ci state seguendo qua da Las Vegas, vi mando un, un saluto caloroso, un grande abbraccio, un grandissimo bacio a tutti voi e a tutte le ragazze in Italia. Ciao. Okay, excellent, great, thank you. Pleasure, ciao guys.